Welcome to the Olympic Zone. Wow, it's been quite a week since we sat here last Saturday, huh? We have seen celebration and disappointment for Team USA in the last 48 hours. But let's start with the comeback performance of the Winter Games. Figure skater Nathan Chen came blazing back in the free skate. This was after a disastrous short program. That's right. The 18-year-old became the first man to land five clean quadruple jumps in Olympic competition. He attempted six and recorded the highest technical score ever. He jumped from 17th place to fifth overall. Not good enough to medal, but more than good enough to silence the critics and any doubt about how good of a skater he really is. What a comeback. And while Chen thrilled skate fans, Japan's Yuzuru Hanyu quietly made history. He took the gold in Sochi and he did it again in South Korea. In fact, he is the first male figure skater to win back-to-back -back gold oh, since Dick Button did it back in night, actually 66 years ago. He also staged a bit of a comeback, overcoming a three-month injury layoff to make the games and become the 2018 champion. And doesn't he have the record now for collecting a thousand poo bears or something like that after <laughs> it takes the event? The girls a long time to yeah. collect. Yeah, them. to clear the ice. Uh, American Lindsey Vaughn's comeback did not go as planned. Lindsey hoped for a medal, returning to her first Olympics in eight years. She finished sixth in the Super G. She said she was disappointed, but she was very proud that she attacked the course and she did her best. What more can you ask for? She expects to have two other chances to medal in other skiing events. Let's talk men's hockey. Team USA took another one on the chin. The athletes from Russia beat the Americans four zip. Ilya Kovalchuk scored twice in the win. The coaches for the two sides left the ice without shaking hands. The U.S. now has to win a qualification game Tuesday just to reach the quarterfinals. The focus on the ice now shifts to the ice dancers. All three American teams have Michigan connections and a good chance at the podium, so we are going to be watching their progress very closely. Tonight, our Olympic gold medalist, Merrill Davis, introduces us to Madison Chuck and Evan Bates of Novi and how they found love and success on the ice. Madison Chalk and Evan Bates have created one of my favorite free dances of the season. It's technically difficult, the highest scoring American free dance, and really captures the human element of skating. Imagine it's a song you recognize the moment you hear it. We were so inspired by the song. Imagine is one of Madison and Evan's favorites. It just has such a great message, especially right now, the times. The power of this free dance is the song's message is so universal, an appropriate choice to perform at the Olympic Games, the world's biggest stage. We knew it was an Olympic year and we would have the stage to say something and we wanted to really utilize that opportunity to have a message that inspired people. The two have skated together since 2011 but the deep connection you see now was not immediate. I feel that our first few seasons together, we were really searching for an identity. And, you know, we found that over the years with being athletic and, and trying difficult lifts and things like that. But now I feel like it's just crystal clear, absolutely, what it is that we want to say, and that's that we want to tell our personal love story on the ice. Madison and Evan are a couple off the ice sharing an Olympic dream, a home, and dogs. They're just so loving and happy. And they don't care if you get first or if you get 10th. I think, you know, they're just happy. <laughs> they're just happy to see you. And like their love is the purest form of love. This time together off the ice is so important to their success on it. I think it just makes us feel more human, you know? Doing the same thing over and over every single day as an athlete, it can really make you feel like a robot. And I think when we come home and we have other hobbies that we're not just, we're not only defined by our skating. Madison and Evan plan to savor this Olympic experience. What does success in Pyeongchang look like to you guys? It's really just about leaving the competition feeling happy. We've, we've really tried to put the results away from our primary focus and, and turn it more internal. And when we leave the ice and we feel that we've had a great skate, we've done what we're capable of doing, that's just the best feeling. Madison and Evan seem to really be hitting their stride. Their strength as skaters, their love story, will certainly serve them well on the ice in Pyeongchang, but it will also see them through well after their time at the Olympics is over. 
I'm Meryl Davis, Local 4. They have such great perspective, yes, don't they? Absolutely. The ice dancing competition gets started tomorrow night in primetime. Steve? Melvindale's Jessica Corman hit the ice earlier today in short track speed skating. Now, things did not go that well for Jessica. This was the 1500 meter race. Corman is on the left. She's in white. And at one point, she and the German skater bump skates. Corman would be disqualified. She finished fourth place, one spot away from moving on to the semifinal round. Corman is so close to realizing her dreams with one race left in Pyeongchang. I wanted to have one more chance to be able to be a part of it. Um, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity for sure. And now the move comes from Jessica Corman of the United States. I want to represent my country. I want to feel proud and I don't want to have any regrets of not going there and having my second chance at being on that stage and being able to live it to the fullest. Well, feel proud for being there, but she'll get another chance. She returns to the ice for the 1000 meter on Tuesday. Olympic athletes need to be laser focused on training, practice and of course preparation. But after winning a silver medal in Sochi, skier Gus Kenworthy also found time for an inspiring trip to Uganda. Now you'll need to take a look at your screen to share his amazing journey. The Olympic Zone brought to you by Comcast Business, built for business. In the Rio Games, for the first time ever, there was a team comprised entirely of refugee athletes. Such love and admiration for these athletes. I went to see what it was like to live in a refugee camp and also just show how sport gives these people a sense of self, gives them something to strive hey. for. How's it going? Hey, guys. Johnny Twanians in Malexi. Today running out of the camp was kind of symbolic to be able to run and just be free for a moment and not be thinking about anything else I think is really beautiful. For me, sport has always been an amazing way to kind of escape my everyday life and escape stresses. For me, being able to partake in all these different sports with these refugees, just being able to feel their spirit is kind of the spirit that the Olympics embodies. It's that of inclusion. A lot of the times we can't speak, but it doesn't really matter because sport and music and the different things that we got to enjoy here are just universal. Kenworthy oh. says the experience was even more emotional than he ever even expected. Isn't that something, huh? Tonight, his focus back on skiing. He looks for another medal in the men's slope style. And of course, we wish him good luck tonight. Oh, absolutely. Still ahead, the gift of friendship might be even more precious than gold. The story of two little girls who met in kindergarten, and now they're sharing an Olympic reunion. We'll be right back. Stars shining bright above you. Night breezes seem to whisper. I love you. Birds singing in sycamore trees. Dream a little dream of me. The Gig Speed Network that powers the dreams of America's businesses is now doing the same for America's Olympic and Paralympic athletes. Dream Gig, Comcast Business. Everybody likes to keep track of the medal count, so let's see where we are. Norway continues to pull ahead of the field. The most medals, 22 overall. Germany has the most gold medals, now with nine. Canada, the Netherlands locked in a battle for third place. The U.S. now sitting in fifth place, a position the Americans share with Austria, Japan, and the Olympians from Russia. 
The Olympic Games truly bring the world together. And for one American snowboarder, her trip to the Games is even more personal. Julia Marino is renewing a special friendship that goes all the way back to kindergarten. You're looking at Julia Marino, the 20 year old out of Westport, Connecticut. For snowboarder Julia Marino and her childhood friend Chai Kim, the bonds run far and deep. They met in kindergarten when Chai's parents moved to the U.S. from Seoul, and the two became fast friends. Chai's parents worked long hours, so the Marino family took Chai in as one of their own. Hi, Chai Young! Her family would take me to different after school activities and we'd go on play dates together and so we quickly bonded over these mutual activities. It felt as if I was a member of their family. When I wasn't in school, I would either be at my house or her house. Julia took up snowboarding at age eight and spent a lot of time on the road. We give it up for Julia Marino. Never imagining it would lead to a reunion in Chai's hometown. Oh my God. Julia, where are you? Oh, Julia. Oh my God. Oh, welcome to Korea. Thank you. Dude. It's funny because when we were kids, we would be talking about it a bunch when we were younger. Like she would go away to Korea for the summer and um, we would email each other back and forth and be like, oh, when, like, one time I should come to Korea and check it out. And now, finally, I'm like, I'm so excited to be going to the Olympics, and it just happens to be in South Korea at the same time. Giving Chai the opportunity to show the Marino family the same hospitality they offered her for so many years. We just didn't know what we were getting ourselves into, so we're really grateful that we're having a great time because of how much they helped us. So. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Chai. The best of friends reunited on the journey of a lifetime. She and the Marino family showed me America, but now I was able to show her Korea. Friends for life. Friends for life. There it is, BFF. Yeah. <laughs> BFF. That's it. This is really good. What a sweet story. I love that story, and I can watch those home videos all day long. It's amazing. Marino has already competed once in Pyeongchang. She finished 11th in slope style, and she'll compete in the big air event starting tomorrow. These great family connections are just so beautiful. Such great stories. All right, figure skating and speed skating. Of course, two sports that share the same venue. They share some of the same type equipment, but some very different needs, particularly with regard to the ice. Behind the scenes, Olympic information up next. Figure skating and speed skating have some elements in common, but once the competition begins, they certainly have a very different look. In South Korea, both sports happen inside the same venue. That's right, and NBC's Rutledge Wood shows us how the ice for each event is completely different, and one man has to make sure everything is perfect for the athletes. Short track speed skating, the Olympic equivalent of a NASCAR race at Bristol Motor Speedway. Something happened. Who's down? That's not a tire rub. It's like watching strawberries in a blender. Oh. Olympic figure skating, by contrast, is built on elegance and beauty. In a Gangyung Ice Arena, the two share the same piece of real estate. And you may not know it, but the two sports have very different needs when it comes to the ice. So I decided to find the man in charge. They call him the Ice Meister. I learned to skate maybe at three or four years. His name is Remy Bowler. And if the title wasn't taken, the Frenchman's life story could be called Frozen. Here, he leads the flip. Flipping the ice arena from use on the short track to figure skating and back. When short track ends, Remy's ice technicians zoom into action, laying down an extra one-fifth of an inch of ice for figure skating. Figure skating ice is also four degrees warmer than short track ice, so Remy dials up the heat for figures, then cranks up the cold on the switch back to short track as his Zambonis shave off that extra layer of ice. And it's these tiny adjustments, right? Because it, right. it comes down to a medal for somebody if it's not perfect. Yeah, sure. They'll do it 14 times in 16 days. Do you get enough sleep while this is going on? Are you getting any sleep? No, but sometimes I rest sleep on the machine. <laughs> no, it's a joke. <laughs> but no, no. It's really easy because I have really good team. It's a dream team. The dream team on ice. Sure. That's an ice meister right there, my friends. 
Who knew? I oh, know. So it, many technical the technology, things. I know. Such differences. The Ice Meister's job made even tougher when the crowd arrives for the competition. 12,000 fans in the arena. Temperature can go up by 10 degrees in as little as 10 minutes. So he's got a tough job. Yeah, he really does. Well, so many great stories have already come out of these Olympics. Golden moments and records broken. We're going to share our favorite moments from the game so far. See if you agree with our choices. That's coming up next. We have just about reached the halfway point of these 2018 Winter Games, and I think it has just been fantastic. It really has been already so many incredible moments, and we're looking back at some of our favorites. What's your favorite, Jamie? This is easy for me. Mine is Sean White. I watched yeah. it live. It was kind of like he had to do it. It was the final run of the whole competition. The Japanese border was at the bottom, and he had to do the best he could do to win the gold medal. It was kind of like a walk-off in baseball <laughs> because he did throw throw it down, he won the gold. I just, I was glued to my TV at that point. Well, and he was obviously the greatest, and then a fall, then big injury, so it's really a comeback story right. for it's, him. And everybody loves a comeback story. Everyone loves a comeback. And now he's won three gold medals, first snowboarder to do that. Yeah. That's pretty cool, So too. he's really had a comeback there. All right, my favorite moment belongs to Esther Ledechka. Who, you say? Yeah, she's from the Czech Republic, a snowboarder who loves to ski. She's done both her entire life. All the experts have told her her entire life, you have to pick one, Esther, or you'll never be great at either one. Okay, well, she wouldn't listen. She says she wants to do both. 2017 world champion in snowboarding. Yesterday, she shocked the world as she won the gold medal in the Super G on a borrowed pair of skis. She <laughs> borrowed them from Michaela Schifrin. At the finish line, she just stared at the scoreboard. Shocked. She said she kept, she kept waiting to see that the numbers were wrong. She won by one one hundredth of a second. What a great story. Just All right, incredible. your turn. So my favorite moment goes to Mirai Nagasu. Yeah. This just gave me chills. She made history. On Sunday, she became the first American woman to land a triple axle, helping the U.S. win bronze in the team competition. And what I love most about her story is she was actually passed over for a spot back in 2014. She thought about giving up altogether, but instead she said she used that snub as motivation, and it was a good thing she stuck with it because she made history and it wasn't just that mm. jump she was skated a clean program and it was beautiful it was absolutely Top beautiful perseverance still ahead a quick look at the biggest events coming up tonight we'll be right back and now we get that check of the temperature for the pyeongchang area the current temperature in pyeongchang is brought to you by the nest learning thermostat Because everyone likes easy. Sure do. Because everyone is on the go. Because we all like to save energy, but sometimes we slip up. Reaching up. Because sometimes we want it cool at night, then toasty in the mornings. Introducing the easy to use, energy saving, adjustable from everywhere, easy on the wallet and the eyes, Nest Thermostat E. E is for everyone. Your sleep Hi everyone, Mike Tirico from the International Broadcast Center. Coming up tonight on NBC in Alpine Skiing, it's the men's giant slalom. Outstanding field here, including two-time Olympic gold medalist Ted Ligeti and the Austrian superstar Marcel Hirscher, already a gold medalist here in the Super Combined. Should be a great atmosphere at the Gangneung Ice Arena, where the host nation South Korea has serious medal contenders in two short track events, the women's 1,500-meter final and the men's 1,000-meter final. That's all coming up tonight on NBC. Mm, that downhill is so exciting. It is yeah, exciting. They're going so fast. I know. It. It's just crazy. It's great. And I love the short track stuff, too, because it's uh, precarious when they're going around those oh, yeah. curves. <laughs> Lots to look forward to. Yeah. All right, so the Olympic Zone returns Monday night at 7.30. Meryl Davis will be back to talk about all the big skating news. And we will be back with Local 4 News around 11 o'clock tonight. So we're just going to settle in now and enjoy the evening. Enjoy all the live action coming up next. We will send you back to South Korea. Have a great night, and we will see you for Local 4 News after the Olympic coverage.